were pressing uh, very very high and aggressive and it was difficult to <coughs> to control the ball it was a very bumpy field extremely bumpy and we have problems to to get out of uh, the the, the Cape Town City structure. We tried later with uh, Mahopa, with Gilberto, to have a little bit more more capacity to link, to hold it in our in their half, and I think we managed to do it. But also due to to the the fatigue in the opponent as well. I think they they, they put the rhythm extremely high in the from 45 to 65 minutes, uh, and in the end they paid a little bit uh, that extra extra for extra rhythm. And we managed to spend more time in their half, having a couple of opportunities with De Jong in the left that could finish with uh, another goal. But it's 1-1. One, one. Uh, we played just now uh, the second leg on Saturday in, in Jogur. And I think it's coming a very exciting game. And that's, that's a good news. Thank you, coach. We'll take some questions. Awesome. Do okay. <laughs> you think the, the, the postponement of the game in Italy um, did it have anything to do with the shortcomings of the game today? What do you mean, shortcomings? Sorry. Anything that you may not have been happy about? Related with the. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Uh, the game was postponed because it was not safe, especially for the people who want to come and watch uh, football. There was nothing to discuss. It was a good decision. We we tried to keep focus to prepare the game as good as good as we could. Same as our opponent, I think we played a good game, and there's no if something went wrong. It's not uh, not related with with the weather or with the change of uh, schedule. So not at all. Well, I think that you can imagine how important it is. Uh, uh, it's much better one one than nil nil. Uh, so happy with the goal, not happy with us. the fact that we concede. We want to win each and every game. Uh, and Saturday is not going to be an exception, but. It's important that we create chances again one more time, but obviously I think uh, we need to analyze what happened in the second half, uh, why I couldn't uh, contend them a little bit better in those minutes. And, and uh, let's see, it's another game on Saturday, and trust me, we're not gonna we're not gonna think that uh, the, the nil nil there is gonna be all right. We're gonna try to play for winning the match as we, we used to do it so it's nice the 1-1 one, one, it's nice the ball away but that's all of course, everything that works well, it was because I planned it. And <laughs> <laughs> no, serious. No, it's one of the is one of the is one of the things that uh, that uh, can help you to. to they, they they were trying to stop us in the middle. Uh, Mococho, Domingo, and Forge, Fortune was. They were pairing with our tens, follow following us everywhere. It was difficult to find from Pepe. And, uh, sorry, from Taviso and from. From Olisa and the, the, our con normal continuity inside, we managed to find Chejo a couple of times and progress from him, but also uh, we managed to keep the fullbacks busy and sometimes find that runaway, uh, especially with uh, with Rele in the left hand side, like you said. Yeah, good diagonal ball, good diagonal balls from Cesane. Uh, so yeah, sometimes when when you cannot go through the central corridor, you have to find other ways to, to attack the last line, uh, to, to get rid of the high pressing. Nothing special uh, is the quality of the players to execute it. And and today, eventually, it works quite all right. Uh, Mr. Gleason. Uh, Coach, were you surprised at the intensity for this early in the season? Or do you think that's a reflection of the new game? 
think of the South African game, which is always 9,000 miles an hour. Mm. At least for a game, this is the second game, your fourth game was a very high intensity. And I agree with you. For us, uh, it's been like that almost uh, from our second week in precision. We play very intense games in, in Spain, as you know. Uh, then immediately a knockout game with super sport. You cannot be uh, in a low rhythm if you want to go through them Champions League. So it's all the time must win games, basically. Uh, it was the same for our opponent against Ekukune, but honestly, uh, I think that in that game they played in a totally different rhythm. Today, I think it's two weeks after that game, they are much better. They are in a much better space. Obviously, the motivation is different. You play home, the stadium is not packed, but it's it's a, it's a good good crowd, uh, inspired. It's a, it's a high motivation. And like I said, I think the beginning of the second half, there's 20 minutes that we couldn't breathe. Uh, and then, actually, uh, personally, I think that they paid that, that rhythm in the in the beginning of the second half, and they have problems in the last minutes of the game. So, like you said, uh, South African football used to be quite intense in terms of uh, there's, there's always moments in, in all the games that the game suddenly is broken and is going side to side with that without uh, any kind of control. And today was not an exception. Good players on the field, players with talent, players with quality in the middle. So I think it's normal that in the end it was a it was a game with a lot of chances to score. <coughs> Coach, just what do you say are some of the, the key steps of progression that you see from your team? Um, can you give me this position, this position, this position? I think probably when uh, the, the, there's always going to be progression if you know where you go, in my opinion, right? So we we trying to to follow our line, we have a process going going on, and as much as we don't separate from, we don't get separated from that process. We will, we will always improve. We will get more mature. We're playing with, right now, with uh, quite quite many young players, uh, attractive players to to watch as a fans. Uh, uh, but yeah. It, it, it requires a lot of responsibility also from them to, to, to little by little be more complete as a football player. That's part of the process. And the only way to do it is competing, competing at this level, competing in Champions League, going to finals. Uh, and that's the way that the team is going to grow and, and, and we're going to be even more happy in the future, in the near one. Okay. You will probably even play on the back uh, fit with the word that you could hold it, but at the same time, you know, to the management to the team, to the team, to the team, well, so this is how do you manage that when, when the turnover is just too Well, I'm not giving the man of the match award. Yeah. I don't think that in this case today was, well, uh, stop Ribeiro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let, I think Sipo has had two really good interventions in the first half uh, in key moments. It, it's true, but one, one extension there in the second half, uh, quite spectacular. But I don't think that Darren or Sipo today were uh, under, under pressure, you know, I think. The, the truth is that the ball was too close to Sipo in the second half, much more close than what I would like. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's why we play with one goalkeeper, because sometimes everything gets, you know, broken in the structure and they have to appear. So we are a big team. We have a fantastic keeper and they, they, they know that they are going to be tested sometimes only once per game, sometimes twice maximum, and they need to, you know, Appears and today Sipo did it, and uh, and it's I, I I prefer to see it like something positive positive that he appears in the game and and not in the other direction. But 
like I said, it's true that for 20, 25 minutes, the ball was too close to him. Coach, uh, just with the second leg turnaround being shorter and the way City plays, is, is there anything that you might change in the way you approach that game? We need to find other solutions, yes, of course. Uh, we don't know if they're going to approach the game with the same type of pressing, with the same structure, with the same mobility when they are in attack, but once you see it, once you, ex once you have the opportunity to experience uh, those scenarios, you are more prepared for the second time, but probably Eric is going to propose maybe two, three different things, details that will, will make the things, uh, again, difficult, uh, different questions, so we have to be prepared for giving, you know, different answers, but also be prepared for what they propose today, because probably they, they feel that, that they, they have reasons to, to repeat some of the things that they did tonight. Uh, Coach, can I ask you a personal question? Um, yes. It's the beginning of your third season now. Um, just, just from what you were expect, from what you expected when you arrived or in, uh, in this country for this league, and how it's been over the two years, has it far exceeded your expectations? Is it a lot? Uh, has it been? Has it been a hell of an experience for you over the last two years? What? Just some reflection on, on, on your first two years of the job. In the league, in general. Well, just the Orlando Pirates job. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, if I say this is what I expect, I'm not telling you the truth. Uh, I think is a is a very very complicated league in terms of uh, it's it's difficult to win games. Very difficult to win games because. Uh, and I think that I said this two or three times before, the level of the players is high. You, you trust me or you don't, but the level of the players in this league is very high. Technically, it's very high. And that gives you the opportunity to, to play good football, not only for me as Orlando Pirates coach. I think that everybody in the league, or let's put it in the other way, no one in the league can, can complain about the quality of the players in the 16 teams. Uh, because every squad is, is quite all right in terms of talent, right? Uh, and that's what it makes the league complicated because there's a lot of players in every game that can create unbalance, can eliminate one or two players suddenly and compromise your structure. If I have to say one big difference, if I compare with other leagues where I was coaching before, other teams where I was coaching before, and that makes everything very complicated. Then, uh, let's say that yeah, my, my position is very, very unique. The last one, Tesharik. Coach. Coach, um, I'm looking at another good performance for him under the belt. When you sat down with him at the end of the season, a while ago, sorry, who? Okay, I'm okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, when you sat down with him, you were in the coaching staff at the end of the season. Was there sort of target for him to reach him or certain potential that you'd like to see him have? Was um, or to just continue what he had done last season? No, really. Like like everybody else, and especially our offensive players, our forwards. Uh, we, we try to play with their strengths. First of all, we try to create spaces and scenarios where Rele can be Rele, where, where Rele can express himself as a football player and show the talent that he has. And then, like I said before, talking about the collective, uh, the, the process, the, the possibility to play uh, very competitive games in the club where we are uh, is giving Rele and other players the possibility to get more mature, to be more complete, to fulfill the spaces where maybe he's not top, because you cannot be top in every in every department, but it's you can work to, to get close to that. Um, so when you go to the field, you try to show who you are and in the positive and the negative, you don't want to be seen, you know, your deficits as well, right? 
So we try to help each and every individual in the team. Really, is not an exception. And uh, I think that you, you all, the same that I do, we all have the capacity to, to, to see how much he improved in the last in the last year in every phase. It's not only a player who with capacity to thread, with capacity to eliminate, with capacity to create chaos. It's also a player who is helping us a lot in the defensive phase, who is improving his capacity to win duels as well. And and that's telling quite a lot about his commitment. Okay, thank you very much, Coach. Thank you.